All right, guys, today I'm back on the 1982 300 SD, and uh, this was the car that uh, they had the, let's see, here they are, the like lamb skin seat covers, and they custom cut, this is just like some regular carpet, they custom cut carpet and stuff and put it across the original carpet in the back, and they had that floor mat in there. And they had this uh, carpet on the passenger side here. So they were like super cautious of protecting the original carpet. So I've got that stuff out. And uh, I mean, you can see it's got some, I need to vacuum, but there's the original carpet. Look at that. It's never been, uh, they, they've never had those mats out. Over here too, the original carpet. So what I'm going to do today, oh, and here's the back. I took the uh, carpet protector out, and that's the original carpet. It's it's in perfect condition. And I took the covers off the original leather seats. And sure, they're a little dusty, but uh, man, look at that! Absolutely fantastic. Because they had those uh, lambskin covers on here, so. I've got to do uh, a repair on the seat. So if I turn it on, so you can see the seat goes forward and backward, no problem. But raising the back of the seat, I hear the motor spin, but the seat doesn't move. And I know exactly what it is. The cable that goes into the motor has popped loose. So that's gonna give me an opportunity uh, to remove these seats then I can vacuum and clean the car really nice, but I can also reconnect the uh, cable. So uh, so the seat goes up and down. And uh, I'll show you guys what that cable looks like. I have some seat bottoms or seat tracks in here from another car. And uh, here we go. So you have your motors. You have your motors here and you have these cables that plug into the motor and then go up to the gear system. Here's, here's actually two that are not connected. And they're just little cables that spin inside, uh, inside this sheath. So that'll give me an opportunity to drop a little oil in there and oil them up. But uh, what happens is if one of these pops just a little loose and this cable, see how you, the, the cable moves in the sheath and it plugs in here. So if that cable moves just a little bit too far back and pops out, it won't engage the motor. I mean the gears. And the motor will turn, but the gear won't turn. So I'm going to pop that off and, and uh, put the cable back into the gear because it popped loose. I've seen that on a couple of cars. Uh, anyway, so that's what I'm going to do today. And I guess I'm going to show, it's not very complicated, but I'll show you guys how to remove the seats in one of these cars. So let me go ahead and set up the camera on the tripod. Well, I guess I can show you now. So first thing you do, you want to get the seat back. Uh, you want to get the seat back vertical. So let's move that seat back all the way up. There we go. And that lets it, uh, that gives it plenty of room to, uh, to get it out of the door. And also, I've got it moved forward right now, and that gives us access to the bolts in the rear. I gotta move it a little more forward. Let's go ahead and move it all the way up. A little bit more, there we go. And there we go, now we have clear, oh, there's that cable right there. That's the one I was just talking about. That's probably popped loose. So that's the one I'm gonna reattach. But I'm gonna get the seat out and get it on the bench. But now you have access to the two bolts here. And when you get those bolts out, you move the seat back all the way and you can get the two out in the front. And then you flip it back and disconnect the power cables from underneath. You do that from the front side. But before you do that, you wanna get the seat centered on the track. That way you can get it out of the door easy. So you move it back just a little bit more. So let's record getting these uh, bolts out of the back here. When we have this seat out also, it's gonna give us the opportunity to lubricate these seat tracks. 
and then we can have plenty of room to vacuum you know all the i'm sure they had kids in the back seat so there's lots of little sand and dirt and grime we'll vacuum that out real nice so you can still move the seat back even with those out so we'll move that seat back and there we go see how they're exposed right there So, what you're going to notice next, uh, sorry, I forgot to do this a minute ago. Uh, I'll show you from the other side because I have to do it over here. You have to unbolt the uh, rear uh, connector. Let's see. There we go. That's the rear connector for the seat belt. That's the bracket. So, you just unbolt it from there, and then the whole thing comes out of the car with the seat. All right, I just leaned the seat back forward. So... This is just a snap-on connect. There we go. You see how that piece just snaps off? But now I got the now I got the battery-operated drill or a 3/8 ratchet. There you go. So you're gonna notice behind that. See this little washer came out, and it's like concave. On this side, so the concave side goes against the transmission tunnel. So we'll take that bolt out. And then the convex side goes against the uh, bracket. And what that does is allows it to swivel and not get hung on the carpet. It presses it out just a little bit and lets this swivel up and down if it needs to. Now that we got that out... We can get the seat out first I need to lean it back and what we did here I'll show you from in here there you go you see this seat track right here and I'm gonna clean all this up that's 40 years of I guess them dropping stuff down there but that is what we just disconnected and it can it clips to the side of the seat right there with that little clip and that's what holds it on the seat uh, but you have to take it off because there is an electrical connection and that's when you plug in the seat belt man look how red that is it didn't even fade at all uh, over 40 years usually they're all faded anyway that electrical connection tells the seat belt light when to turn off when you plug this in so that's why this has to come out let's see all right here we go okay now that i've got that seat leaned back let me show you what we're working with underneath it Probably usually a bunch of pennies and french fries and all that. Oh, there's our penny. And uh, there we go. Here are your electrical connections. We have, all right, and this is just a cover to cover everything off. This can actually pop off. There we go. So we have the connections coming out of the, the car harness here up to the seat. So we're going to undo this connection and we're going to unplug this connection okay here we are about two or three minutes later i got the little uh plugs undone look at these connectors uh that's what i like about mercedes so this connector all the pins are labeled and then on the back if you need to rebuild the connector the wires are color coded with a color coded sticker on the connector and then this connector has a little loop right here that's so you can pop off this side of it and literally swing it back like a door and remove all your little pins and clean it out. It's, uh, I mean, they must have put hours <laughs> into uh, building these little, little clips, but it's great because you can rebuild these guys. Anyway, I have the pins disconnected and now the seat is disconnected, see? Now I can actually pull the seat out. So the way you do this, the seat is an L shape. So what you have to be careful about is the plastic trim pieces on the sides of the seat. If you like pull the seat out and then rest it on here, it's gonna bang these uh, plastic trim pieces on here and crack them. So you wanna be careful. There's one on the, uh, I don't think there's one on the other side, but there's one here and there's one there. Anyway, you want to flip the seat sideways like an L shape 
and then it can pivot out of the door. I'm going to try to do this on camera. All right. You got it rotated sideways. And then you pivot it out like an L shape. And that is it. Now you got to be careful when you're taking it out. I'll show you this. See, here is the seat belt bracket. When you're taking it out, you want to be careful not to scrape that against the leather on your center console because it'll just it'll come out here and go and just ruin your your leather. So you want to do that. Anyway, there's 40 years of stuff falling under the seats. There's some stuff I did. That's where I was wiring up the radio. Looks like we got a pistachio pieces of paper. So I'm going to vacuum all that real nice. Also, what I like to do, these little pieces here, um, that's just a trim piece that goes around the carpet and the seat mount. And there's always a little corrosion. So you can see a little corrosion right there. So I like to take these out. They just come right out and sand them a little bit. And then I respray these. Um, with just uh, a nice silver paint and it makes them look brand new again. So you can see a little spot of corrosion there and I, this is on every one of them. Um, I guess it's from spilling soft drinks or whatever back here. Oh, there's, there's no stains on the carpet. So no soft drinks or anything have been spilled under here. So that's that little bit of corrosion is probably just from age. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll paint those, get them looking new, vacuum real nice in here. And uh, now we're gonna get our seat up on the workbench and uh, see why um, the tilt forward and backward of the bottom cushion is not working. Hey, what's up, Jefferson? What are you doing? What are you doing, buddy? Hey. <laughs> All right. Okay, I have the seats out of the car. Driver's seat, I've got on my workbench always put down a blanket you know so the leather can rest on the blanket so it doesn't mess up or put any marks on the leather there's the passenger seat so here's what the issue is with the seat so you have the three motors just like I showed you guys on that seat you have the three motors and you have the cables that come from the motors to turn the gear mechanisms that are over here so it's very easy um, to check here so what I'm going to do you just put uh, positive and negative there's pins underneath here let me show you the pins there you go there's groups of pins there so you connect the first two pins or the second two pins or the third two pins or the last two on the end but it's uh you know like this one let's see this one in the back and the one across from it so though and it goes down the row like that uh, and you connect power to C. So let's take a look here. So I'm going to, so if you look, here's where I'm connecting pins. You can see the seat up there to watch what moves, and you can see the track here. Uh, so let's first connect these first two pins. All right, that's the tilt. That is the seat back tilt. There we go. The next one, there we go. The next one is the uh, sliding track. See how the track slides? So the next one, there's our issue. So let me connect this on here and show you guys. And you can feel which cable. Here it is. It's this cable right here. It's spinning, but nothing's happening. So I bet you this cable is broken or has come out of the gear mechanism right here because it doesn't do anything. So I'm going to go ahead and pop the cable off and we'll take a look at the gear mechanism over here. All right, guys, instead of taking off the seat frame, I wanted to go ahead and take a look at this cable. And so what I've done, I've popped off. This is the uh, worm gear. There you go, that the cable actually turns. See, this just goes, sits right in there, and the cable actually plugs in 
right there in the end. And so I popped that uh, the cover off, and then I popped the worm gear off, and everything is really nicely greased. It's very clean, very good condition, and I can see the end of the cable is kind of flopped over to the side there. It was not uh, up inside that worm gear. You can see it right there. So I'm going to go ahead and extend that cable a little bit and push it back onto the worm gear, and we're going to see... Um, see if it uh, re-engages. All right, guys, I'm zoomed in. You can see here's the cable, and there is the steel, steel cable inside the sheath. So we want to see if that's broken first. And it's absolutely not broken. See it spinning? So that cable is in good condition. All right, guys, basically I grabbed a pair of pliers and pulled the cable back through the sheath so we had more extending and we're still engaged with the motor so now we're going to reassemble this Let's see if i can do it on camera here there we go now that gear is engaged in there put back in there there we go all right I'm just gonna touch it a little bit we're gonna see if it moves there we go we're looking for this bar moving now that the gear uh, the the cable is re-engaged with the gear see that there we go so we have our seat back our seat tilt uh, repaired. Now I just want to, now we have the cable pulled back through. Now I just want to reassemble. We got the cover plate over there. And put this plate back over here. There we go. All right, we're just going to put our protective cover back over here. There we go. That is back together, and that is one fixed cable on the driver's seat. All right, guys, here we are on the passenger seat. And same cable uh, right here. All we need to do is slide the cable back through the sheath and then reinstall the worm gear with the longer cable into it. All right, guys, I got the plastic cover off. Um, and this is a metal bracket underneath it. And that the metal bracket has a tab that actually holds the cable in. Now, got to get a screwdriver and sometimes pry this off a little bit. There we go. Looks like both of them want to come off together on this one. Okay. That is actually wanting to pull out. It's wanting to pull out the gear with it. So hold on. There we go. We're going to pull this out without pulling the gear out. There we go. So this is the plate, the cover that comes off, and the gear is still in there. And then we can pull off this little plastic piece here ever so carefully. That's the worm gear. Now... Okay, good. Now let me show you guys. This is something a little strange. So this worm gear is out of here. There's plenty of grease in there. It's just the cable wasn't engaging. Now up here, the Germans put, or Mercedes put, see this little loose? It's like a small plug. 
right? See, it comes up. You don't want to lose that. That has to stay right there because it presses up against the end of the housing and holds this worm and holds this worm gear in position. So you want to make sure when you put it back together, your finger's kind of on it, and you slide that into the housing there so this doesn't fall out. So we're just going to set this worm gear down while we fix our cable. There you go. Same situation on this cable. Look how far down the cable is. It's barely, barely sticking out. So we're going to grab our pliers. Oh, where did I put them? Here they are. Plenty of grease in there. It's not a grease issue. There we go. We're going to pull our cable back out. See, uh, what they, the design flaw here is that this cable pushes. You can't see, but it pushes. The other end is going into the motor, and there's not a stop inside the motor. You can continue pushing the cable, and it'll just continue going into the motor. And over time, they'll slide back in there. So now that we have it uh, pulled out, we just want to verify that it still works. Uh, it's still engaged in the motor. Oh, see, it's not. I need to push it back in a little bit. There it goes. So we pull it out just a little too much. There we go. There we go. Now it's engaged back into the motor and we've pulled it out. So that's good. So we want to take that, and again, here we go. We're, we're holding that little cap on the end, and we're going to stick our. Sometimes you got to spin the worm gear to get the cable to seat in there. There we go. Now we're going to put that little cap in first. You guys can't see that, but. That little cap at the top I put in first. <clears throat> there we go. Now we got that back in there. Now I'm just going to temporarily hold it there and just bump it to make sure that it's engaged in the worm gear. How many times can I say worm gear on this video? So watch the seat to see if it moves. There we go. See the seat moves now? Let's go ahead and put it back. Here we go. That's good. All right. So now that that's there, and everything's greased up fine. That grease is still good. There's a ton of grease in there. So no, no need to re-grease that. I mean, this, is, uh, this has been sealed perfectly, and that grease is absolutely fine. There we go. We'll line this back up. There we go. All right. Now, let's see if I remember correctly. It's this one here first. That runs it in there nice. And then we're going to put our cover back on. aluminum so I'm going to do it by hand in case it's trying to strip there we go it's threaded in there there we go and we'll put in the last one down here there we go and I'll just make sure they're tight by hand all right guys that is repaired we'll do a quick test now that we got it reassembled Perfect. All right, this seat has been repaired. So now I'm gonna go ahead and vacuum out the car and we'll throw the seats back in there. All right, guys, it's the next day. I just got my shop vac. And uh, before I put these seats back in, I went ahead and vacuumed out the interior. I'm not a detail guy, but this car is so nice anyway. I mean, you don't need a detail guy. Um, there's no staining or rips or, I mean, it's basically still in perfect original condition. So I've got that vacuumed out. Um, what I've also done, went ahead and uh, sanded 
and resprayed the little metal brackets. Remember I showed these previously in the other video. Uh, they always have a little bit of corrosion on them. Um, so these guys, I'll show you how those go in. Okay, I went ahead and popped in these little metal brackets. They're very easy to put in. So there's a little tab here and a clip in the back. And you just put the clip in the back and press down and back. And they just clip right in there. Um, always respray those because um, they usually have like food and junk and just dirt all over them from being under the seat. So I sand them, I scuff them up with a Scotch Bright pad, and then respray them their original color. So those uh, came out super nice. Um, so now we're going to go ahead and get the uh, get the seats back in the car. Um, I would say they're probably 60 pounds or so. So uh, when you put it in the car, again, you just make the L shape. You go in with the headrest first, um, and just don't don't rest the seat on anything continually hold it and manipulate it uh, with your arms. Don't let it sit on the seal or the center console or scrape up the door. Um, you just basically you want to hold everything. You go in with the headrest and you make the L-shaped turn and just keep going back. Clears the steering wheel. There we go. And then you rotate it down without hitting anything. Which can be tricky. There we go. And that's how you do it. I leave it leaning back because I'm going to have to plug in the connectors underneath it. All right, the driver's seat is back in, so now we want to test the controls. So we'll lean, oh, I gotta turn the key over here. All right, there we go. Seat leans back, seat slides back, slides forward. Now the part that didn't work was the up and down. See it's now, now the seat is tilting up and down that was what we repaired so i'm going to go ahead and get this bolted back in i just have one bolt currently on the front we'll get the seat belt reattached and uh these seats are done all right we have the passenger seat back in the car and i just vacuumed it and got some leaves in there but uh there we go now we have forward and backward tilt we have all the ranges of motion. Very nice. So we have both seats working. Let's go over the driver's side. Super nice. That leather is in amazing condition. And again, all the got all the ranges of movement in the seat. Now in the I think 84 and 85. You had headrest adjustments. On the 82, it's manual. But on the uh, 84, 85, there was actually another switch right here for the headrest. Uh, to be honest with you guys, that's just one more thing to break. I kind of like the 82. I can pull the headrest up myself. Um, anyway, those are back in the car. We got the seat belts uh, reattached. Got the nice reconditioned little metal brackets down there. And uh, man, this is an absolutely beautiful vehicle. Anyway, so man, that's that's almost it for this car. I'm gonna test drive it for uh, you know a week or two, make sure I've got everything and everything's good. I mean, it's got completely new suspension, and uh, I've gone through everything. Uh, windows all work, cruise control, suspension brakes, shocks, you name it. Um, so I'm going to test drive this and we'll do a walk around video and test drive video in the next, I guess, week or two. But uh, I didn't didn't shut the hood. The hood's open, but uh, that's a beautiful 82 300 SD. 
so stay tuned guys and uh i'll post more videos as i uh as i make them take care